When today's guest was in kindergarten, he never used the pastel shades when coloring. He chose all the bright shades and then reached for the glue and glitter to highlight his picture. Now that he's an artist, he changes media to fabric, thread, and embellishment fibers, taking color and texture to a new level. Please welcome Christopher Naiman, an author and fiber artist who applies the designer techniques to create spectacular pillows. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Christopher. Nancy, thank you. It's an honor to be here. In today's program, we'll begin with a signature pillow I've entitled Harem of Color. The word harem in Arabic evokes a spiritual place as well as a group of people. It is a place rich with jewels, symbolized by the jewel tones in this pillow, emphasizing the rich colors of life. We'll be punching or felting elegant fabrics together to create a base fabric and then adding metallic threads, crystals, and fringe to give a sense of an Arabian night. Designer techniques using your sewing machine. That's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy TV's how-to sewing program with Nancy Zeman is brought to you by Baby Lock, a premier line of sewing and embroidery machines, sergers, and accessories. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Ginger, a tradition of quality and scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Madeira, superior quality threads from Germany, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Amazing designs and amazing variety of embroidery designs and software for any embroidery machine, including designs by Nancy Zeman. Koala cabinets from Australia, quality crafted, fully assembled sewing furniture, designed for maximum storage and minimum space. Rowenta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing, the choice of professionals. And Nancy's Notions, discover the joy of sewing and quilting, a catalog filled with specialty notions, fabrics and supplies. To begin this program on designer techniques, we're going to start with the base pillow. Not working with the jewels and the threads, first of all, but getting the fabrics and the fibers embedded into a base fabric. Now, Christopher, you like to work with a duck fabric, a cotton duck fabric, a real stiff base. Yes, ma'am. And then work with interesting cuts of bridal fabric, chiffons, silks, whatever All you'd like. fun stuff. And yeah. you don't have to press it. No, you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be working with a regular sewing machine, but first of all, we're going to be felting and punching using an embellisher, a puncher, a felter, whatever you'd like to call it. Many of these machines have five to seven needles without eyes. They're rough. They're like barbed. And that's what Christopher is going to be using and is the basis for this program. It's, it's a whole new world Nancy mm -hmm. and what it's all about is marrying two fabrics together forget about your threads right now this is your base you're creating and like you said we use our base duck cloth we have a machine with seven needles mm -hmm. you have a guard for your fingers and one important thing I want to uh, tell your viewers Nancy is to make sure you have an extension table because when the larger pillows you make like this you want to be sure that you have uh, a flat surface like a flat bed sure. now what we're going to do first is we're going to start with our fabrics and the book that accompanies today's program talks about the type of fabrics to use like silk, silk dubionis, eyelash materials. We're going to place a first piece under here and not, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm out teaching Nancy I find that people want to lay this flat like sure. they're doing traditional sure. uh, piecing. You're not going to do that. You're going to move it and crunch it around and you're going to do your edges. Start around the edges and fade it in. Those barbed needles cause the fabric to pucker. That's correct. And you know, in the book, Nancy, we tell, don't cut the threads off. Watch sure. what happens when I get to these threads. It just puts it right in. Blends it right in and gives you some texture. And I always talk about this, this technique is a lot like airbrushing. Now we're going to join another piece next to this, Nancy. And let's just do a little bit of this eyelash fabric here. Because you're going to see how this, what I call, swallows it up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of interesting. Put this under here like this. And as it's going in, it's going to just condense this whole piece sure. of fabric. I you can punch as much as you want or as little as you want. And this is how you're getting it. Now I'm going to do one little piece here to show you how to feather two pieces together. Let me cut another little piece here for you. While Christopher's cutting this, notice how he moves the fabric. Because you do not move the fabric. You 
fast, you so fast, move the fabric slowly. Right. You do not want to turn too fast because you will break a needle, Nancy. That's a big fear everybody has. Until you break a couple needles, you're not going to get the feeling <laughs> of how what to do. Now, I want to show you how we're going to feather this. I want to turn this for the camera to see better. We're going to turn it this way, and I want you to notice how we're going to fade the edges into the next piece by just slowly going over it in a constant motion and then wrapping around, and you build upon that. When you're finished, this is what it's going to look like. Isn't it beautiful? It is. It's very charming, and all the fabric goes around off the edges. That's fine. We'll trim it later. Right. Here's the and, back. Look at that. I think that's important to see the back because yes. it embeds. You can see how the fibers are embedded through that cotton fabric. Now, you'll also like to add some embellishment threads. Absolutely. Fibers, I should fibers. say. Fibers, yeah. You know, this is where you take uh, this new product that's out in the market. It's a, it's a fusible uh, fabric. It's uh, fibers, mm -hmm. fibers, metallic type fibers. And you're going to take pieces like this. Let me do it on this piece that's finished, Nancy, because okay. it'll give it a better look. We're going to take the, fab the fibers and we're going to say that five times. Put this <laughs> under here and just punch it down. And embed it. Marry these fabrics together. Holy matrimony here. Now, <laughs> after this, when you're done, you're going to hit it with a steam iron. Okay, and I have a piece that's been imbe embedded with the fibers embedded into the area. And then we just have a little steam. And they're fusible, so they kind of melt together. But there is another step, and that step is to do some stippling, scribbling stitch to attach all layers together. I have a decorative thread in the top of my machine, and you recommend working with, Christopher, the sliver threads like tinsel. Nancy had devised ways that makes it easy where you don't get frustrated and your threads will not break. And that is to bypass the pull on the thread by wrapping it around the bobbin, as we have here. Otherwise, it pulls too tightly and it could break. I've dropped the feed dogs. I have a darning foot placed on my machine. And I'm just going to use what we've done so often on Sewing with Nancy, just a little in and out scribble stitch to hold things down. You can do this according to your preference, how you'd like this handle, but you need to do this stitch. The stitch is called scribbling. Unlike stippling, you're going to cross the lines and fill that pillow up with as much metallic threads, threads as you can, Nancy. It gives it the glisten and helps support the top fabric. And for people who are on comfortable stippling this is a perfect place to start because you don't have to worry about crossing anything it can blend that's right one of the last steps to making this harem of color pillow is to do another stitch with a satin stitch we take a close-up look you can see the black thread regular presser foot is put on and here Christopher is doing the stitching using a satin stitch a narrow to medium width and then turning the fabric to create these interesting scribbles but then you have some final accents. Jewels. Jewels. <laughs> Lots of jewels. You can use glue to attach some ears. We'll show you later that you can attach crystals. You can create fringe. You can add as much or as little as you'd like That's correct. to create this interesting designer technique pillow. So this gives you the basis of Christopher's great way of designing using fibers, fabrics, and threads. Christopher named this designer pillow Ray after the Egyptian god of the sun. Gold and purple tones are surrounded by a deep black foundation, emphasizing the strength of the sun when it conquers darkness. Suede back satin is needle punched to a finish of faux suede. Punched strips of lame form the brilliance of the sun and circular rows of metallic thread capture the outer bands of light. Crystals and strands of metallic serger thread at an opulent touch. This pillow is certainly fit for a king. Here is the actual pillow. It's about 20 by 13. You can make your pillow any size you'd like, choose any colors, but this is really a brilliant combination. Again, the cotton duck fabric is used as a base, and we have strips of suede cut, the satin back suede cut, and you're not going to use one whole piece of fabric and you'll see why in a minute. Then we have four inch squares of the same satin back fabric and then some lame. And Christopher, you're ready to show on a small sample how this all goes together. Yes. We talk about nap and fabric, Nancy. Right. And one nice thing about what I'm going to do is you're able to get a different look and feel. When this is done, it's going to take on the feeling like the pillow, which is like a, a, a velour or a mm -hmm. suede. Yeah. So you lay your fabric down. This is where you don't crumble it. Sure. This is fine to be flat now. So you're just going to take the fabric and punch it down. 
because people would say, well, why don't I just use suede? Well, you know, suede's not cheap. <laughs> so you still want a little type of texture to it because the uh, punching machine is going to give you a little bit of texture naturally. Sure. But we want that suede feel to this pillow, that real expensive, elegant look. And what an inexpensive way to get it is to do this. Now, taking the next piece, we're going to take from our strip and we're going to just cut and you're going to build off of each other in any direction you want. Okay. And that will capture the light. Absolutely. Yeah, the idea for this came to me when um, I saw the way fabrics were laid next to each other. And actually, in truth, Nancy, I made a velour jacket, and I had one side upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so I was dark on one side, black and gray on the sure, other. Sure, sure. And you know, we learn from our mistakes. Of and course. what we call those creative opportunities? Yeah. yeah. So, if anybody tells you they're perfect, well, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> and after we do this, you're going to just finish the whole pillow right. by overlapping. And again, make sure that you're fading your edges on right like this. And as you can see, we just keep going over the edges and fading it. Now, the next step from this is after the whole base has been punched, we're going to add the black squares. And you can see in this sample here how I have placed the squares to punch it in. Okay. And you just work it in, and you may want to pin it in place. Yes. I don't suggest spray basting sure. because of the glue. Sure. Just pin it in place, line it up, and then make sure you remove your pins, of course. Of course. You know? Yes. I mean, you can tell everybody that. So. Okay, then we have some lame strips that we'll add. Lame strips, you cut them, slice them up, dice them like you're in the kitchen, and just <laughs> lay them down randomly to form any position you want. The hardest thing in my techniques, Nancy, is anyone who's a perfect sewer that has to be a perfectionist is going to have a hard time just be free forming. Sure. Um, I find in your sewing room, the girls want to iron all my fabrics, and I said, no, don't do it, don't iron it, because we're going to just wrinkle it up anyway. So, you know, it's, it's okay to fold your clothes, but you don't want to fold your fabric here. This is not the time for it. <laughs> I'll let you just tack down a little bit of that so our viewers get to see this. And as Christopher is finishing embellishing and punching that, let me show you one sample that we have already made with the embellished or the punched lame strips around this area. My machine is now set up for the free motion stitching, which we did before. Loosen your tension. 1.8 or by two numbers or notches. I have gold thread in here and I have the same setup but now I'm just going to work radiating this piece of fabric and you'll have a bigger pillow top than just our small samples but you can see you work over and over and over this area just making circular motions. Then after doing this let's refer back to our original sample, you can see that Christopher did a nice buildup of the radiating motion in this area and then added, not, these are not plaid strips, but these are decorative strips that go down the center. Here's a close-up of a multi-cord foot where we have used three threads and using a domino type stitch, satin stitching down three strand, strands of decorative serger thread to create the plaid look. You can vary your look, if you would like, by using different fabrics. And you wouldn't have to use satin back suede. You could use duller fabrics and get the same look by just varying the design. So Christopher, you have a lot of options for our viewers. Absolutely. My next designer pillow was inspired by pure happiness and joy. I entitled it Petals on the Nile. These dazzling flowers float over a river of color giving the illusion of free spirits drifting through a dream. Imagine the rows of decorative stitches leading the river to the brilliant ocean. Then envision the flowers, iridescent fibers with foundations of metallic ribbon thread leading your creative soul to brilliance. Now, Nancy and I would like to share with you the creative details. In the series, the first two pillows we demonstrated worked with the puncher or needle felting machine. But Christopher, now for those of us who work mainly with just a regular sewing machine, we're not needed, it's not needed to have the punching machine or felting machine. We can just use decorative stitches. Absolutely. And some free motion techniques as we demonstrated earlier. I like the size of this pillow. Mm -hmm. It's compact. It's a really nice accent pillow. But we're going to create a base, an interesting base, and with uh, some leftovers, yeah. some, yeah, some well, new techniques. You know, Nancy, knowing me, I, if I'm going to do some traditional machine, I had to jazz it up. So, 
I want to show you this bag when you're embroidering, which is so popular today. Right. And you exactly. cut those threads, put them in a jar, then stick them in a the bag and hang on to them. Now, I want to do something with the threads, but I didn't want to put it between vinyl. So sure. what I created was just taking all these fun threads that you have, <laughs> pulling them apart. Whatever you call. Oh, look, I got some leftover beads in here too. Just, yeah, go ahead and snip okay, it, Nancy. Well. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to do a little bit here to show, okay? But you're going to lay this out and let's let's pretend this is an old cooking show nancy and we're making we, pizza we're making pizza yeah. or you're you're uh yeah you're laying pizza down here little little uh spinach and uh pepperoni and whatever you want here and what do they say kick it up a notch yes yeah okay all right so we're gonna lay it down here and what you're gonna do is you're gonna just move it all into each other sometimes you're gonna now you're gonna do one layer first nancy lay your teflon pressing sheet over this Take your iron and run it over. We're not using steam right now. No steam. Not needed. It won't go through the Teflon anyway. So, And as we're doing this, what it's doing, the heat is fusing the fibers with the thread and creating a nice base. This is the first layer, layer and what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Look at that glisten. Isn't that beautiful? It is. It is. Now we want to fill in these empty spaces now. Okay. You want me to show them? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So we're going to take the next pieces. You have to build this up. Build so. it up. Yeah. You want a solid piece of fabric and the threads are holding the fibers and giving it more beef. Sure. Okay. So we're going to just lay it down like this and fill it in and we fuse it again. And when it's done, it's going to look like... Here we go. There you go. Here we have some film that has been created or fabric that's been created. And you can just see kind of the colors emerging, emerging here together. And then the, the thread on the underside, giving it some strength as well as some shadowing. Now the, we used a little adhesive spray, but it's kind of, we've peeled this off right now to right. hold it to the base fabric. And then decorative stitches. Here's a close up of the stitching the decorative stitches, not in straight rows, but this is called Petals of the Nile. So you can see that it's flowing. You can kind of have them going the same direction, but they don't have to be straight, which I think that's a great idea. Break the rules. Break, Break the, rules. the rules. You're not following any straight lines here. When we look at the finished pillow, you can see the petals. And the petals were made by creating with the fusible fibers a very thick base really shiny as you can see and then cutting it into petals now you have little thinner petals here the choice is yours how thick you want to make this fabric right I did it thin and you know Nancy after we try something once we always go back and say sure. oh, I'm gonna try something different sure so make it as beefy as you want then the centers are built up with with free motion stitches in the middle and here's a just a close-up of sewing those stitches in the middle to put those down into place and then a crystal adds the touch but there is more Using many of the same techniques we've just learned, Crystal created another pillow. He calls it Sands of the Sahara. With an inspiration was visualizing a gentle breeze blowing over the desert. The sands of the Sahara move and glisten like fine diamonds in the radiance of a gossamer sun. It's poetic. You too can create lyrical effects when you incorporate Christopher's design techniques. Well, here's this great, grandiose pillow. Yeah. You can see the fan and the sands and the Sahara look. This has many of the same techniques that you used when creating the interesting fiber mesh. But this time, rather than creating a With, heavy mesh... Okay. We just we eliminated the thread and just pressing the fibers. So we created a sandwich with the pressing sheet, the Teflon pressing sheet, and we have a miniature version here where you can see that we'll place this on the fabric. And here's a close-up of using the free motion stitch without using, it, without using the feed dogs, just radiating out with metallic thread to hold the fibers into place. Yes, ma'am. And your final step Glue, paint, jewels. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah. Glue, paint, jewels. And you can see what an interesting this gives and what glisten effect it has. It's very brilliant. Certainly a designer technique. I hope you'll be inspired with my next designer pillow. Romance over Costa Rica. When seen from above, the tropical forests of Costa Rica reveal intricate textures, shadows cast by mountains and valleys, rivers and streams, hillsides and cliffs. The pillow captivates such a dramatic landscape with elegant fabrics, sparkling metallic threads, and glistening pearls. 
I know you'll enjoy this creative process. Like some of the other pillows that Christopher has designed, this large rectangle has a lot of depth to it. And you know why he entitled it Romance Over Costa Rica. We're going back to the felting and punching machine, back to working with a cotton duck as the base fabric. And you have some strips of fabric ready to go, I ready sure to cut. Do. I sure do. Nancy, we're going to work with texturing again instead of just doing flat like we did on the ray pillow. Right. Okay. This texture I've, I've, I want to refer to, which um, is called, I'm going to call it bubbling. We're going to take the fabric and manipulate it, leave it standing up, and all we're going to do is punch on the outside. Go all the way down and punch. Come on in a little bit on the center, leaving unpunched areas. And this is how we're getting that texture effect. Now, coming in here, you can go in and just tap it down in there. And if you want to tap a little more here. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about this, Nancy, is that when making this type of pillow in any color you want, get a fabric that is in the same family, but in a to different tonal value. Sure. Okay? And then you're working with a satin back. Crepe back satin. satin. Yeah, it's a satin. And now mm -hmm. what we're going to do is, here's another thing too. Let me show you some. When I'm going to add to this, I want to fade it in. So I'm going to cut small pieces and I'm going to feather this in. Fade it, like we talked about. And you're punching very... Let me worry here, Nancy. Dense. You want a very dense and going over the fabric and over the fabric. Yeah, you want to, you want to really feather this. Mm -hmm. Then you can take a piece that's a little bit bigger and bring it out here overlapping and then you go back to Feather your again. bubbling again out like this. So not only are you saving your scraps of thread but scraps of fabric. Absolutely, absolutely. As Christopher is finished or working on working with punching and I'll just show you another small sample. He's also embedded the fibers into this area and done some scribbling or stippling stitches and the pillow itself had has pearls on it and I'm going to be using a pearl foot with an indentation on the underside so that I can zigzag over this. I'm using I'm using a metallic thread and I'll just simply zigzag over this area, kind of meander stitching all the way around. Let yourself loose Nancy, just sway. Okay, let it, let Dance, it. move those hips. Okay, here we go. So now you get the idea of some of these designer touches. Our final designer pillow was inspired by a satellite view of a hurricane that Christopher saw while watching television. Certainly bright ideas come in surprising forms. This pillow features the colors of the tropics that come back to life after the force of nature is over. Punched and felted strips of metallic fabric from the mighty swirls, stippled metallic threads and pearls cling precariously to the eye of the storm. Now you know why Christopher calls this pillow Tropical Wind. It has many of the things we've been working with today, plus an idea about shaping. Oh. What is really nice today, Nancy, is fabrics that our grandmothers never had. And the fabrics today, front and back. Mm -hmm. You can get two different types of looks from a fabric that has the front sure. and back to work with. As always, my base piece is a duck cloth. Permanent magic marker, I drew a whirl, okay? As I said, I was inspired from this pillow from the hurricane satellite images in Florida. What we're going to do is we're going to start like we always did, hit a little punch, tap it down. And as you're following your center, you can take this and turn it to form another color peeking through there. But you're punching all this. Get those edges punched really nice. And I'm leaving, I'm leaving a lot of the center from being punched down. Now here's the next piece. As you can see when I go around, I'm going to just do this, come back, twist it over again, and follow it and fill the rest of it in. And as we look at Christopher's final pillow, you can see that he added many different colors of fabrics, types, radiating out from each other, then adding his signature stippling,
the pearls, some fringe if you'd like, sequins, and mirrors to create a very dramatic designer piece. Christopher, this is really charming and very interesting. Thank you, Nancy. It's time to wrap up our program on designer techniques using your sewing machine using Christopher Naiman's terrific techniques with texture, thread, and fiber. It's been delightful. Nancy, you know this is my dream come true being with you. <laughs> and you. I'd like to say thank you for the past 15 years teaching me how to sew. You're welcome. PBS for all the free education. Well, thank you for joining us. And thank you for watching. We hope to see you next time on Sewing with Nancy. And as I always end every show, Bye for now. Visit Nancy's website at sewingwithnancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy has been made possible by grants from the following companies. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing, a premier line of sewing and embroidery machines and sergers. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Madeira Threads, because creativity is never black and white. Amazing Designs, embroidery solutions for any embroidery machine. Koala Cabinets, designed with maximum storage using minimum space. Ruenta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing. And Nancy's Notions Catalog, discover the joy of sewing and quilting.